Tell me, Stan. Tell me what should I do? Huh? Why does he keep repeating his own name? <laughs> Surely not. Even I've never heard tell of a second Stanley. Oh, Stanley. It should have been me. I should have been the one to die in the Meljabari that day. Why won't your spirit come and stop me from using your name? Why, Stan? Why? If only you hadn't had to save a rookie like me, you would have never died in that windless corner of the world. You were a renowned adventurer, destined to become a legend one day. But now, that'll never happen because your life was cut short and all because of a worthless tag of all. Uh, does anyone get what's going on here? I think our friend really did make it to the Mare Javari. And I think the tragedy he encountered there was real too. But the real adventurer, the real Stanley, that was his partner, not him. The real Stanley is the one who died to save our Stanley. Wait. So the only reason our Stanley is called Stanley in the first place is because he stole the other Stanley's name? I fear that may be the case. Stanley, for so many years I've lived in fear. Fear that Mondstadt will forget all about you. So I tell you adventure stories at every opportunity. Mondstadt must remember. Stanley reached the center of the Madravari. He's the greatest adventurer there ever was, and he lives on. Stanley will never die, because I am Stanley. I am Stanley. I'm sorry, Stanley. I'm getting too old. Now, are you guys planning on eavesdropping much longer? Let me tell you again. Yeah. Honorary Knight, Venti, and Paimon. I'm so glad you guys are here. I've been looking for you everywhere. I wanted to thank you again for helping me find the sword and shield. My parents are finally supporting me. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, really. They even said they're gonna pay for someone to fix up the sword of brilliant valor and shield of magnificent honor for me so I can take them out on the road. That's wonderful. So, Jack, is this the part where you bid farewell to Mondstadt and set off on your intrepid trip traversing to Vat? No, not yet. I still don't have what it takes to go too far from home just yet. Besides, I'm sure Stanley still has a few stories left to tell. <laughs> They're what inspired me to become an adventurer in the first place. Stanley, I... Oh, you're drunk again. We'll see you tomorrow, then. After your hangover wears off, maybe you can tell me some more of your stories? Stanley's really fond of that kid, don't you think? Uh, Jack. Jack. Jack left. Oh, I see. Well, thank you for not telling him about my secret. Huh? All of a sudden you're facing the facts? That isn't like you. Just now, I couldn't bear to look at him. His adventurous spirit is so pure, unblemished. Just a weary old feckless fraud. But that kid is a brand new shining star, full of potential. I cannot allow his dreams to be crushed. Um, you're not a total fraud. Stanley's adventure stories and experiences, they're all true, aren't they? Stories? Experiences? What's the point of them anymore? To be honest, my memories of adventuring and of Stanley 
They're hazy these days. That's my biggest secret of all. And my biggest fear. All these years, I've been living to tell his story. But his personality and the details of his life, I don't remember them clearly anymore. <laughs> but the one thing I can never forget is that he died in a windless land where his spirit can never be recovered. Exactly. Even in his memory, the real Stanley isn't the living, breathing friend he knew at all. Instead, he's become fixed on the image of him as that battle-scarred warrior. And that image has held him captive his entire life. I'm too old. I never let go. But still, so much has slipped away. I'm completely and utterly worthless. No adventurer should have to go that way. No adventurer ever. Hans Archibald. My true name? How did you know? <laughs> the wind. I can hear the wind blowing in the Mare Tavari. I always believed you existed. Will you hand me your old friend's spirit? I can't believe it. Thank you all. And thank you, Lord Barbados. I'm sorry. It's gonna take me some time to calm back down. But I think that I'm gonna be okay. Ah, oh, wonderful. Stanley reconnected with his true self and Jack can finally go his own way. This calls for a celebration! And by celebration, I do, of course, mean libation. And by libation, you mean you're not leaving this tavern till you're too drunk to walk, right? <laughs> no, the wine here's too expensive. Jack still owes me some wine, though. He promised me a rare vintage in exchange for helping him out, remember? I'll head off to fetch the wine. See you shortly. Let's meet at the usual place. Supposed to be. Why has Paima never heard of it? Hey, Tone Death Bard! Oh, hey! You made it. Finally. Just tell 
us where you mean next time, okay? We looked everywhere. <sighs> so, did you at least manage to find your wine? Yep. Uh, well, sort of. Jack made it out to be a rare collector's edition vintage. When actually it's just a half bottle of regular cider. Ah, <sighs> this takes me back. The first time I saw this view, I hadn't even taken on this form yet. It was about 2,600 years ago, before the world had come under the rule of the Seven. At that time, Old Mondstadt was ruled by a tyrant, who sealed off the city's perimeter with a ferocious hurricane. Even the birds couldn't get in or out. Old Mondstadt? Oh, Pyra remembers! Nowadays it's known as Storm Terror's Lair, right? You mentioned it before! That's right. The Tyrant of the Winds who once ruled from that tower was Decarabian, God of Storms. Back then, I was but a wisp among the Thousand Winds. I wasn't a god of anything. I didn't even have a human form. I was just a tiny elemental being who lived in the wind, a gentle breeze bringing subtle changes for the better, or tiny seeds of hope. A tiny elemental being? Without a human form? Venti, do you mean you used to look different than you do now? Yep. My current form is not so different from the situation with Fake Stanley. <laughs> I took the form of a friend. An old Mondstadt transpired the story to be told. Where a tyrant ruled, I met a boy not that old. The liar he played, and for a song he sought. But storm walls blocked blue sky, he was sincerely distraught. I do so wish to see the birds in flight, said he, his strong eyes filling with light. But his voice was lost in the howling wind's churn, for the whirlwind takes and gives not in return. The true sky and songs that cageless soar, were they not wishes worth fighting for? So the boy turned, extending his hand. Let us cast down the tyrant and his walls from this land. The young boy raised in the flag of revolt, and I threw myself into freedom's tumult. Victorious were we who fought to be free. Gods fell, winds whipped, nations shook violently. In the smoke, a despot met his doom. And we watched as his great tower fell none too soon. Mondstadt began anew, the story passed down, and since then never has another worn its crown. So then what? What happened to your friend? Say, Paimon, do you wish to hear the next part of the story? Yes, of course! The suspense is killing Paimon! But Venti's telling his story! What makes you suddenly want to have a meat feast? <laughs> Getting a little peckish or something. Huh. Paimon's had it up to here with you! Ah. <sighs> You know, you're so smart it almost makes me uncomfortable sometimes. But then, maybe it's right that true friends can tell what the other is thinking. A refreshing drink, a gentle breeze... <sighs> Moments like this always take me back. Back to a song that I first heard from him. Fly, fly away. Like a bird in the sky. See the world on my behalf. To the heavens may you fly. <laughs>